The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, the beginning of that reading from Matthew 21, verses 33 to 37, Jesus' parable of the tenants. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect the fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. My dear friends in Christ, in the parable of the tenants, Jesus said, there was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. In this parable, the landowner is God. The vineyard, that would first refer to God's chosen people, the Israelites. And, well, the, the wall, the wine press, the watch power, tower that he built around it, that really is all to think about all of the wonderful things that God did for his chosen people. He gave them the word of God. He gave them the promise of the Savior. He blessed them with his presence in a way that no other nation ever had experienced his presence. He blessed them both physically and especially spiritually. Well, the parable continues. Jesus said, when the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. The tenants that he's talking about here refer to the Israelite leaders and really to anyone who rejects God's servants, the prophets. We could think of, for example, prophets like Elijah and Jeremiah, the Israelites. They really should have received Elijah and Jeremiah with open arms because they were proclaiming God's word to them. They were faithfully preaching the word to them. Yes, they were preaching the law to show them their sin. They were trying to call them to repentance. But that was God's word, and it was there. Ultimately, it was supposed to bless them. They should have received Elijah and Jeremiah with open arms. They were prophets of the true God. But the Israelites, they rejected those prophets repeatedly, just as they ended up rejecting God's son when he was sent. They rejected him, they had him crucified, and well, of course God sent him into the world to be their savior and the savior of the world, and yet they rejected him. So why did God send his prophets and his son? Why does God still send his witnesses into our world today? Well, to speak the word of God to us, to preach the law and the gospel to us, to lead sinners to repentance and faith in Jesus and thereby to bless us. Tragically, those Jewish leaders, they rejected Jesus, but ultimately God wanted to bless them. He wanted to work on their hearts, but they rejected him. Well, God sent his prophets and his son to the Jews because that's how God spoke to them. 
And that's how God continues to speak to us through his witnesses today. Jesus said, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Oh, maybe we could think here of the prophet Jonah. God sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh to say to the people there that in 40 days the city would be destroyed because of their rejection of God. But God's grace also shined through that message. It sounds so stern, so severe, but God gave them 40 days, period of a time of grace for them. God gave them that 40-day time of grace, and God's word did work on their hearts. The word led them to repentance and so that God didn't end up destroying them. And now see, that's always God's real purpose when he sends the word. That's God's real purpose. God doesn't want anyone to suffer eternal punishment. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Paul said, God our Savior wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So let's remember how God speaks to us. It's through the word that's proclaimed by today's prophets, which could be pastors, teachers, Sunday school teachers, or anyone for that matter who shares, who faithfully shares the gospel with us. And let's not forget that God does speak to us whenever we, by ourselves or with others, would spend time in the word. That's how God speaks to us. And that's how God blesses us. So let's regularly, faithfully, and often gather to worship and study God's word and enjoy his blessings. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we're faced with so many problems in our sin-troubled world but we've also received so many blessings from you, your grace, mercy, and love, and ultimately you'll give us heaven. Help us always to see how truly blessed we are. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always, amen.